Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use my brand new Bird Brain Teto rig that I've just uploaded to Gumroad and it's completely free to download, don't worry. Just make sure to click this link that I'll put in the description below, crashcanadian.gumroad.com slash i slash birdbraintetto. All you need to do is name a fair price, which can literally be zero dollars. If you want to support me with a donation, I will not argue with that, but you don't have to. Click I want this. Then after you do that, you're going to see something that looks somewhat like this. You're going to see this zip file right here, Teto Bird Brain Crash Sune. Uh, it's going to be your main file. You want to click download next to that. It's probably going to be on the right side. And if you scroll down here, you'll even see the turnaround drawing that I used to make this model if you are interested. But in our case here, we're going to click download on this zip file. And when you're done downloading that zip, the file is going to look something like this on your computer. Teto underscore birdbane underscore crash that zip. Now you're just going to want to right click on this and click extract all. Or you can just click up here, click extract all, then extract. And after that, you'll have your blend file and all the original textures in this folder right here. But in our case here, we mostly care about this Blender file, right? So to open this, you can either double click on it, or in my case here, I'm going to drag and drop it over my Blender window until I see this open option. Now, I didn't see this because I've already done this in my Blender, but you may see a message when you open it that says, uh, this Blend file wants to run scripts. Uh, are you okay with that? Like a Python script, allow execution or not allow. Just make sure you hit allow. In fact, you can even hit a checkbox that says always allow, which I would recommend because you really shouldn't be downloading Blend files you don't trust anyway. That's totally fine. All that's gonna do is make sure that our rig layers right here work properly. This is the newest version of Blender I'm using right now as a recording 5.0.0 you can also load this in the goo engine this is completely optional by the way you don't have to do this but if you load this in goo engine i'm using like 4.1.0 here and go to rendered view you're gonna have some bonus shading effects uh, around her hair just to give it a nice little outline however don't worry I've kept this model compatible with any version of Blender. Um, so if I go to rendered view here, it's still gonna look perfectly fine in default Blender. So that's that. We now have the Teto rig open here. Now let me show you how this rig actually works. Now, if you want a full breakdown of how posing, animation, and all that stuff works in Blender, I have a really in-depth series called Master Character Animation in Blender. Um, which is on my channel here. It's completely free. All these videos are free and you're gonna get a really great understanding of the fundamentals of animation, the interfaces required, keyframes, timeline, all that stuff. You're gonna get a really good understanding of the fundamentals here um, completely for free. So I highly recommend this series if you don't understand things like pose mode yet or any of those other Blender animation fundamentals. But in this video here, we're gonna give a brief overview of how Tato's rig in particular works. Her controllers are going to be split up into two categories here. The first is going to be face controllers, which is what we'll go over first, and the second will be just body controllers. In order to actually manipulate and pose her, you just want to click on her rig here until it's highlighted in orange. Then you want to go to object mode up here and set it to pose mode. Or if I turn on my screencast keys right here, you can just switch between those by pressing control plus tab. I can see I'm in pose mode, and if I click that again, I'm in object mode. So in order to just preview her hair and face bones, I'm gonna go down to this object data properties tab. And there I'm gonna see this collection right here called bone collections. And you're gonna see all the different bone collections uh, in this menu. If we press N here and go to item, these are actually the same bone collections that we can toggle by clicking this rig layers dropdown. So if I wanted to hide the face bone collection, I could click right here. I could even click right here. If you're doing it in this menu versus this menu, it's literally the same thing. This is just slightly more convenient, right? And let's start by actually messing with the face controllers. So to isolate a bone collection, meaning that only the bones in that collection are visible, all you need to do is click this little star icon right here. And when I do that, you're, see, you're gonna see that all of the face bones are now visible and none of the other bones are visible. And I can see what these do by zooming in here and clicking on them. And I can rotate this around by pressing R. And by doing that, I'm gonna hide the you put overlays, you're gonna see that this bone actually controls the position of her mouth. I'm gonna reset that by pressing Alt plus R and change the actual shape of her mouth by using this bone right here. So if I press G on this bone, hide her overlays, you're gonna see that nothing actually changes. And the reason for that is we are actually in the solid shaded view. So if I hold Z right here, you're gonna see we're in solid view, but we wanna actually be in rendered or material preview. So now that I switch from solid to material preview, you're gonna see that the shape actually changes. And if I hold G to move this bone around, you're gonna see all the different cute little shapes she has for her mouth. 
And I can actually click on this mouth bone and I can scale this on the X or Z axis. I can press G to move it around. I can press R to rotate it around. So you have a lot of flexibility with how her mouth looks and transforms on this character. And you have a ton of different shapes you can play around with here. Lots of silly stuff you can do. And it's one of the most fun parts of this rig. You can see it's not perfect. Sometimes it'll clip in itself, um, but you can always either transform it, scale it, or rotate it around to hopefully minimize clipping issues. So I'm gonna reset this by pressing Alt plus G. Now, if I wanna actually mess with her other face bones, I can click on these two right here. These are the iris controllers, so if I press G plus X, you're gonna see that I move these around on the X axis. If I press G plus Z, I'm moving these on the Z axis, and I can even press G plus Y to move them on the Y axis. These are really useful if you wanna pose around her eyes, of course, and I can just reset these by clicking on them and press Alt plus G. Then we have these up here, which are obviously just eyebrow bones, which you can rotate and move how you please. Um, and there's three of them per eyebrow, and you can get some lots of different unique expressions with these as well. However, uh, you might be wondering, how do I actually adjust the eyes here? Um, that is actually done through shape keys. So I'm gonna press Control plus tab to get back into object mode, because I was in pose mode. Then I'm going to click on my face mesh right here. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is selected. Uh, then I'm gonna make sure I'm in this yellow object data property, excuse me, green object data properties tab right here. And I'm gonna scroll down and expand this list right here that says shape keys. Then if I hold right click on any of these shape keys, I will enable it. As you can see, this is blink happy left. There's also blink happy right. There's smug left, There's smug right. There's blink left, blink right. And you can use any combination of these you like in order to get some different fun results. So that's how you animate um, her shape keys, and you can just press I to insert a keyframe on this, and then let's just go to frame 21 to set this to one, for example. If I play this back, you're gonna see it's gonna not animate between this because I actually need to insert a keyframe right here. So now that I'm on frame 21, I'm gonna press I again, then change this, then press I again because I don't actually have auto key enabled. I'd probably wanna enable that ideally, but now if I play this back, you're gonna see that this actually animates. Um, however, your preview might be quite laggy. Um, the reason for that is if we go to our um, render properties tab, we actually don't have this option enabled right here called simplify. And what this does, and it's very obvious if you look at her chest, it makes her much more geometric and low poly, uh, which greatly, greatly improves your viewport performance when you're animating. So if you're animating Teto here, I'd highly recommend you check this box, right click on this even, and add it to your quick favorites. So now if you press Q, you're gonna have that at your mouse whenever you want. So if you wanna like just preview what she's gonna look like high poly, you can just do that. But if you want to actually animate her, you're probably gonna wanna keep that on in order to greatly speed up your performance here. So that kind of covers her face controllers and how to adjust her expressions. Let's uh, delete these keyframes right here and put this back to zero. Now let's go back to the other controller she has. So I'm gonna click on this star icon to unisolate it and I'll even hide this face controller and these hair controllers. Actually, I should show you the hair controllers real quick, my bad. So I'm gonna isolate this hair controllers, press control plus tab to go into pose mode. And because I have this set to individual origins, if I just rotate these, you can see exactly what these do. There's controllers for her little hair clips up here, her heart-shaped hair clip right there. There's controllers for her bangs, for both of her twin tails, of course. Basically everything you need to animate her hair. Um, these are very, very useful. And you're gonna wanna use these in many animations. So I'm gonna unisolate that again and hide that because now it's talk to, time to talk about the actual body controllers. Um, there's actually torso tweak controllers. And again, this is the exact same menus we're highlighting um, or revealing. In these bone collections, it's the same ones in these rig layers. You can use whatever you find more convenient. But if I go to the torso tweak bones, you're gonna see right here, there's actually some bonus controllers for her shirt, which you might find useful for animation. There's also these controllers for her breasts right here. Which you may also find useful. This rig uses IK by default. So if I move this in, scooch this in, then click on this, I can press R to rotate. Um, and this hand is gonna just, we can translate it around in order to move it, right? Whereas if we switched it to FK, which we can do by pressing N, going to this rig main properties tab and sliding that over, uh, so this is 100%, uh, then in order to actually see what we're doing, we're gonna wanna enable the 
arm FK bones for the left arm, because we just did this for her left arm, then we can hide the IFK because we don't need that right now. Now if I click on this and press, you know, R and X to rotate it, you're going to see that this uh, is now an FK, which means that it's, it's controlled by rotation rather than translation, AK, just moving it around. This can be very useful for certain different types of animations. You can also select her bones right here by selecting them like this and then press S to scale them in. And you can use this bone to kind of control how splayed her fingers are like that, which can also be very useful. Same with uh, the thumb here. You can press S to scale that on in and pose it exactly as you'd like. And again, I'm going to just show you how much of a difference this makes. If I rotate this, you're going to see that there's we're getting really good viewport performance because we have Simplify enabled. If I turn this off and I want to add this to my quick favorites again because I'm now in pose mode. If I turn Simplify off and then do that same rotation, it, it's n I don't know if it's going to show up on YouTube, but this is noticeably laggier. That's a lot more difficult to manipulate. Well, lots more slow, I should say. So I'm going to press Q and turn on Simplify whenever I'm animating Teto here. Um, so that about covers that. That's how you switch it to FK. You can do that on the feet here as well. If you have a very specific scenario where you'd want FK feed, though you're usually going to want IK just like this. But that about covers it. Make sure to join our public Discord server, which is linked in the Gumroad page itself. If you want to get help with this rig at all, or if you have any questions, feel free to comment them below. And make sure to check out my low poly character modeling course, which is on sale for Black Friday. Just a few more days here. Uh, this is also going to be linked in the description below and will give you a crash course on the fundamentals of making completely original low poly characters in any low poly art style you can possibly imagine. I'll leave a link to this below as well. Well, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this rig. And if you make any animations with her at all, please tag me at Crash Soon. I'd love to see what you make. Uh, have a good one, though. Take care.